Thanks, Kate. Hi, everybody. My biggest Zoom meeting yet, I have to say. Um, so, yeah, we, um, I'm from Meeting Point. Um, I've been there for about nearly 10 years now. Um, and we are a small, very small frontline charity uh, based over in Armley. And we work with refugees and asylum seekers. So um, individuals from all stages of the, the asylum process, um, we welcome to our project. And there's only three of us that work there part time. And then we rely on a team of, of about 45 volunteers. Um, Pre-COVID, we ran a very large social drop-in, which saw over 100 people attend each week. Um, we also ran English classes and a women's group trips, very much a sort of social project um, based on community and family feel and bringing people together, um, which of course we've had to change um, given the given the current situation given the fact that so much of our work is based on on social activities and that and that's so important for our clients we did feel that we needed to continue um operating in that respect in some way that was so we were meeting the client's needs as well as sort of meeting the public health requirements so lots of risk assessments and frantic meetings um, took place at the beginning um, and the resilience fund sort of came quite early early on in, in lockdown I think it was the beginning of April that I was contacted and it very much sort of offered some immediate financial relief to us so it enabled us to stay open in a way that we didn't have to worry about finances in, in as much as perhaps we would have done and it's enabled to, um, us to continue supporting our clients throughout where um, we've been open every week every Monday since the start um, just to sort of focus on our beneficiaries a little bit I think it's important to remember that whilst we're all going through lockdown and everybody's experiencing the pandemic um, the majority of, of our beneficiaries or started it already at a disadvantage um, and already marginalized in society and so whilst we're all going through it we we, we had different starting points um, and the fact that most of them were reliant on charities such as ours to meet sort of basic and emotion practical and emotional needs um, I think is important to remember um, I feel like COVID has exasperated existing issues um, such as poverty, isolation, destitution, but it's also created new ones. Um, people have been stuck in between um, systems, in between appointments, um, there's been delays in, in applications. Um, it's only served to increase existing anxieties. And whilst, you know, refugee groups are inherently quite resilient in themselves, I think this sort of lockdown period has um, triggered some past trauma in terms of that feeling of being shut in and locked down um, and I think the long-term effects of that um, we're, we're yet to see. I think just in terms of what we have been doing, how we've been operating, um, we have continued to provide food parcels um, fresh food um, which we get donated from from supermarkets and through fair share and things um, takeaway hot meal um, we've provided toiletries activity packs craft packs for the kids um, english classes and also we've provided a sort of level of reassurance um, and emotional support at such an uncertain time um, i think it's been really important to have a level of continuity and certainty um, during this period for people um, we've obviously been doing all this on a very, very reduced team, um, only sort of five people maximum in the building. Um, so it's been quite a lot of pressure on, on staff, but it's been, it's, been, it's been good to be able to still provide a face-to-face -face, um, service. And we've done a sort of safe socially distanced distribution um, of items from the church. And for those that have been unable to attend, we've been doing a delivery service. Um, 
each week now i mean last monday monday just gone we did almost 100 food parcels that fed almost 200 people um and the deliveries are averaging of about 50 a week um, across leeds and we're hoping as as things open up a little bit to to reduce that and encourage people to attend in person um the issues that our clients face won't disappear when the pandemic ends um and i know that's the same for a lot of us um but i think the custom of theirs will be exasperated i think it's going to be even more important for sort of frontline third sector organizations to continue running um to provide support going forward um and i think just to summarize um what this funding has enabled us to do the resilience fund um it will help us sustain our work beyond covid so it, it will enable us to have the financial security um over the current months so that we haven't had to reach into some of our unrestricted reserves to keep on going and because some of our, our current funding is very much based around our social group work we haven't been able to to use that um because the group work has been suspended so it's offered that security now which will then continue into the future i think also there's there's there is a bit of a fear um that once the pandemic is over there's going to be much less funding available for the charity sector going forward and yet our clients needs um will continue and possibly worsen and i think that's that's the anxiety sort of next financial year um and we want to be able to ensure sort of long-term support and sustainability for our clients going into next year and certainly the, the you know the significant funding from from you guys has has really helped so thank you thank you <laughs>